This up here is the navigator. To make sure that it's turned on, we'll go to window, we'll go down on through to palettes, and then we'll click on navigator. Now, the reason that we need the navigator is that it's gonna be where we set up our project. From how many stories a building's going to be, to the actual height of those buildings, what layers are and aren't showing up on our plans, as well as the scale, what pens we're using, it's also where we go to place our drawings on a page, as well as actually publishing our files to PDFs, as well as DWGs and any other file types that you can think of. To begin, I'll give a short overview going from the start all the way to publishing. To kick off, you'll wanna start with the project map. This one just up here. Now, if you're not sure what each of these different symbols means, you'll wanna go up into help and turn on tool tips which means that when we hover over the top of the symbol, it's going to tell us what that tool or button is. It's gonna be so handy throughout this entire tutorial. So if I just hover over this one, this is the project map. If I hover over this one, it's the view map. This one, it's the layout book. And finally, our publisher sets. But we were starting with a project map. The project map is where we set up our actual stories. So just here, you'll notice it says stories. And just underneath that, if we right click, and go story settings. This is where we're going to actually set up our different stories as well as the heights for those stories. The project map is the origin of all of our drawings from the plans themselves, all the way to the sections and the elevations. Not to mention all of our schedules, as well as details, as well as interior elevations. What we'll do then is we'll take those drawings and we'll bring them over onto the view map, which is this one just here. Now it looks like there's a fair bit going on here at the moment. There's so many different icons and so many different things being labeled. So if we just minimize this, it'll become a little bit more manageable. To take our drawings from the project map to the view map, what we wanna do is just go over to this icon just over here. So if we click on here and go show organizer, or if for whatever reason you can't find that, if you go to window, palettes, and then go to organizer, you'll then have this palette here show up. So basically what this does, it looks a bit daunting, but trust me, it's not, don't worry about it. So with this one here, we can select the project map on the left-hand side and then we can select the view map on the right hand side. What this allows us to do is grab the original drawing, say the ground floor plan, and we'll drag it over onto the view map just here. Once it's in our view map, we can right click and go to the view settings. We can start editing, say the scale of the actual drawing, how big or small it shows up on a page, as well as the pens, what colors are being shown on the actual page and what layers are being shown up as well. This is why it's so critical to make sure that you're always working in the view map when you're actually drawing your plans and organizing your project in the project map with all the initial setup and tweaks to heights and stories along the way. So project map is our heights as well as the stories and the original drawings. And the view map is where we can adjust how things are shown. Now, once you're happy with your actual drawing in your view map, what we can do in the organizer, so we can actually select the view map on the left-hand side and the layout book on this right-hand side. And this is where we can start to see the power of the organizer. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a new layout. I'll call this one 3D press back view. And for the master layout, I'm just going to select this one to A3 blank, which I set up a little bit earlier. But any of these will do when we're getting first set up. And we'll go create, hey, there we go. So we've got a blank page that we can now put our drawings onto. So now in our view map, I'm just going to go down to this ground floor that we just created earlier. I'm going to select this one, I'm going to click and drag it over onto our page. And now we've got a drawing on our page. Now I can also do this for other drawings, say like 3Ds. So if I grab this 3D isometric I created earlier and drag and drop it on over, I've now got my drawing on that page as well. This one's a bit big, so what I'm going to do, Control K to rescale, I'm just gonna go OK, select the bottom and the top, and then pull that one on down till it's around about the size that I want it. There we go. I'll drag this one on over here and drag my floor plan just over here. So we've got three of them ticked off with one left to go, which is our publisher set, this one just here. So to publish these drawings to an actual PDF, what I'll wanna do, I wanna click this little plus button just down here, new publisher set. This little prompt will pop up just here. I'll call final page layout, we'll go create. Now that one will pop up amongst my other publisher sets. If I double click this one here, there'll be nothing in there, which is perfect. Because what we wanna do is we wanna drag that page that we just created into that published set. So I'll click and drag this one just into here. Excellent, there we go. Now, if I double click this one here, just to double check, make sure, yep, this is the page that's being brought up. I can now move on to what format this is going to be exported as or published as. If I go down here to where it says format, yours might be minimized, but if you click on this little arrow just here, what I wanna do, I wanna publish this one as a PDF. So amongst the options, I'll go PDF. I'll pop back out so that I'm back into my publisher sets. If I right click and go publish your properties. This gives me the settings to be able to publish my drawings. I've got a dedicated video on this if you do wanna check out a step-by-step -step process, but for now, we'll move back into the Navigator and show some practical examples. So we'll go 
cancel and close out of this one just here. So that was a brief overview. Now for the deep dive. To give a practical example, we'll go into the project map and we'll right click on any of these stories. We'll go to story settings. Now you'll see this is where I've got my height set up. If I wanna say change this to say four meters, say 4,000 and go okay. It'll pop up this little warning here at the moment just because I've got a set of stairs, but we'll ignore that one for the second. We'll go okay. You'll notice that it's brought up the height of all of my walls on the project, all automatically. Now this is because we've got our walls here so if I go into my settings, set so that they're linked to that first floor. But this is a great way of automatically having our drawings sync up with the different settings that we set up. So we'll go OK. Now if I want to reverse that, I can't go Control Undo. What I have to do, I'll go back to Story Settings. I'll just go to 750 and go OK. And everything's going to pop back down. Same thing if I want to add an extra story, I'll just go to Story Settings. Then if I want to add a story above, I can go Insert Above and say Second Floor. And I could go OK. And all of a sudden, it's going to add an extra story or an extra floor that I can then detail up above it. Likewise, I'll go back in, story settings, and I can delete that story. And we'll go OK. It'll give me a little warning, but I'm going to delete it anyways. Everything will sync back up. So that's the project map. Let's jump into the view map. So we'll go to our floor plan, if we can find it amongst this file structure. One thing I'd recommend, if you've got one of the ARCHICAD templates that's really bulky, just go through and delete the stuff that's not necessary. Make sure it's a copy of that file and not the original. Otherwise, you might get yourself into a little bit of trouble. But let's go through, say this empty batch render folder just here. I can right click and I can delete it. And it's less stuff to have to navigate through each time I go through the view map. But that's just me. I try and keep my drawings minimal as possible. Our next practical example, let's go to ground floor. And within here, we can change what is actually showing up on the plans. So each of our different elements in ARCHICAD is set to a layer which are these just here. So if we go Control L, we'll find all the layers just on this right-hand side here and the layer combinations on the left-hand side. So it might seem a little bit complicated, but it's not too tricky. Layer combinations basically just mean what layers are turned on and off on each individual plan. So we might want a ground floor plan where it's just showing the walls and we don't want to see the furniture. So to do this, what I can do is I'll create a new layer combination. I'll say no objects and then I'll go, okay. I'll make it a little bit easy to find floor plan. No objects and I'll go okay. Now nothing's changed. So this is where we can do this in our view map. So if I go right click on my view map and go view settings and once I've got the view settings open I'll go to layer combination. This one just up here which is where we'll find the layer combination that we just set up a second ago. We'll go down to floor plan no objects and we'll go okay. But still nothing's changed. We've still got all the furniture there. Now on this project a lot of the furniture has been set up onto objects landscape. So if I want to turn this off, I'll just go Control L to go back into my layers. I'll type in landscape and I'll click on this little eye just here. Now this, this eye will make it visible or make it hidden. So if I turn this eye off and we look over to this plan just here, it's still showing it the eyes open, which is kind of confusing. But if I go update down the bottom here, all of a sudden it's going to be closed. So that's locked in our preference and locked in what we've just set our layer to. So now if I go, okay, all of a sudden, all those objects disappear. I can even take this rug just here. I'll go landscape and I'll set this one to that same layer. So all of the interior has disappeared and we're just showing our walls. Now, the really cool thing about the view map is that we can now take this and we can duplicate if we click and drag and then hold in control, we can duplicate this plan just down below. You'll see a little plus button just underneath my cursor and I'll have a new little plan just here. I'll lift this one up just underneath this drawing here. So if I now right click and I go rename just for clarity, ground plan with natural objects, I'll go okay. Now if I right click and I go to view settings and I change my layer combination, back to that original plan architectural that we had just before. And I go, okay, nothing's gonna happen. But if I now double click, all of a sudden everything comes back. And that's because the layer combination for plans architectural, this one just here, if I go to objects landscape, the eye is open. So this is where we can quickly and easily navigate between two sets of plans. So if I go this one here or this one here, it's going to turn those layers on and off. And that's the power of the view map is that we can have a bunch of different plans that we can then put onto pages so we can show different information. Not to mention at different scales as well. So if I say, go to this plan with objects and I want this to be a larger scale. If I go into view settings, then I go to scale. I can change this so it's a bigger scale. So if I say go one to 50, 150 is gonna be much bigger. It seems a bit counterintuitive that the smaller number means that it's bigger on the page. Anyway, let's forge ahead, we'll go okay. Now it doesn't look like much has happened. But 
we will see that the text has gotten smaller. So if I double click on this one, then I double click on the previous one, we can see that little bit of a difference. Where this is going to be the most obvious is when we actually bring it onto a page though. So I'm going to open up my organizer, go show organizer, and I'm going to go to my 3D view page. I'll drag this one down to the bottom just so it's easy to find. Now I'm going to drag this one to 50 page and let's see what happens. We had drag this one onto the page, much bigger. It's gonna be double the size of the one to 100. Now the curious thing is, the 1 to 100 one is also showing its furniture. Now this is because we set it to this view just down here. But if we relink this drawing to the one just above where we set it so that it doesn't have the object showing, let's click on this one, right click, and we'll go link drawing to. If I now go to the ground, this one just here, and I go to link, all those objects disappear. So the view map, we can toggle what shows and what doesn't, as well as how big or small the actual plans are. This is just a few of the parts. If we right, if I go back into my plan with the actual object showing, I can right click on here within the view settings, I can actually change what pens are showing. I can actually change a bunch more in here, but you can see this is where we can make further tweaks to what's actually showing up on our page and how it is being shown. And the cool thing is we can create duplicates of one drawing and have them easily accessible so we can toggle between those different drawings and what is showing and what isn't showing. Now, with all that covered, we can jump back into the layout book. So if I double click this one just here, we now know this is where we set our pages and where we put our drawings. Now, for one other little practical example, within the layout book, if we right click on the page that we've set up, we can go to layout settings. Now you'll notice a recurring pattern with each of the different things we've just shown. If we right click on this right hand side on the organizer on the, or on the navigator, we can find a lot more settings within these dialogues. If I go to layout settings, just here, I can change the actual page that I'm using that I originally set up. So if I go to blank page, then say I go to blank page vertical, I'll go okay. Then all of a sudden I've got my page and it's in a vertical orientation. I can rearrange my drawings onto the page as I need them. But to actually set up these pages, we've got our drawings just here. Underneath this is where those master pages are. So if I go to the blank A3 vertical that I've just set for this page just here, I double click on this one, it's going to be a blank page, which I can now adjust so that that's the way that this page shows up for every layout that's been set up. So if I take this polyline and I say, create a little title block just down the bottom. So this one just here. And then I go back to my 3D view. We'll now see that it's automatically shown up on this page. Now let's say I go to another page, this one just say here. We'll see that it's updated for this page as well. So we can make one change in one place and save the effort of having to change it in multiple other areas. If you would like this file or any of my other tutorial files, they're now available over on the Patreon. It's a space where I can look after a small group, creating custom assets and resources. But if you're keen for more tips and tricks, I think you'll love this video just over here.